Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a weird morning it has been this morning for the weather. Uh, it was chucking it down with rain just a few minutes ago. It was cold uh, and it was very windy and it's still very windy at the moment. So I decided while I was writing my news or updating my news, should I say, that I would actually do it from inside the house this morning. And I'm actually doing it from the bedroom. Uh, so just quickly, uh, this is a cat's life for you. Here they all are. Or oh, well, four of them of our uh, ten odd cats that we've got. Uh, they're even deciding that it's a bit too cold to go out this morning, and uh, they're quite happily having a cat's life, snug on the bed. Uh, that is Sandy there. Uh, this is Nelly, and over there is Georgie, and next to Georgie, this is Nipper. All right. So there you go. They're having a nice, easy time lying on the beds. Um, and if you do start hearing trumpet music playing in the background, don't worry about it. You haven't gone crazy. It's our neighbour. Our neighbour, believe it or not, is an ex... Um, I've probably spoken about this before. He's an ex-Greek um, Air Force bandsman. Uh, he did 20-odd uh, years, 25 years as, a, as an Air Force bandsman. Um, he obviously has retired. Uh, but uh, he's took up the trumpet last year on the first uh, lockdown and uh, he basically <laughs> has been learning the trumpet all the way through the actual uh, lockdowns and he's getting very good actually. So anyway, if you hear him blasted away, it's because he's practicing. He normally goes to his brothers to practice. Uh, but uh, I think because of the way the weather is, he's staying here to practice. Anyway, um, let's have a quick look at the news, just switching the picture around. I can see a few faces there and a few people turning up. A uh, big hello to Amanda, who's uh, dropped me her weather forecast, which we'll look into that because it actually plays into one of my news stories today about the weather. Uh, also, I'm going to warn you now that the, um, the news today is a little bit a little bit grim with the doctors at the moment and uh, as we go on uh, you will you'll will see what I mean but anyway let's uh, crack on with the stats from uh, yesterday then just to remind you it's 22nd of March uh, 2021 it's Monday and it's day now 136 of the lockdown um, COVID in the last 24 hours, I've got to be honest, the numbers are actually starting to go down a bit. Uh, I did report to you yesterday, 2,535 new cases. Uh, at the moment, uh, the numbers are as follows for today. Uh, 1,514 new infections were recorded, uh, which was obviously down. Uh, that brings a grand total since the pandemic started to 237,129, of which 51% are actually uh, male. Um, there were nine new cases identified at checks into the country. That was also down from the previous report where we had 11. So that's a bit of a positive. Now, according to the national stats yesterday, um, there were two new cases in Lefkada. Uh, there was one new case in Kefalonia. There was 11 new cases in Corfu and eight cases on, Zatin, on Zakynthos. However, locally checking, uh, we had five new cases for yesterday, Sunday. Um, those were confirmed in Zakynthos, uh, two from rapid testing that took place with the mobile health team who were doing checks in Solomon Square yesterday. Also, uh, the remaining three were from molecular, from molecular tests, uh, which were done at the General Hospital. And those last three were a 57-year-old, a 21-year-old, and uh, also a 86 year old uh, who has also been admitted to the COVID clinic as well. Anyway, so at the moment then, Zakynthos has had 200 positive cases uh, since the beginning of the year, and uh, we've had 100 positive cases for March alone, actually uh, here on the island, 70 in February and 30 in January. So uh, again, our numbers have been going up. So that's one of the reasons why we are in the deep red at the moment. Anyway, so as for deaths then, deaths are actually down slightly across the country. Uh, there's been 41 new deaths where the day I reported before, we'd had 60. 
Uh, that brings the total death toll since the pandemic started to 7,462 with an average age of 79 years of age, where 96% of those people had underlying health conditions or were over the age of 70. Um, to put that in context, the normal average daily death rate in Greece for 2019 uh, was 329 deaths a day. So, um, Let's have a quick look at critical cases then. Critical cases at the moment are up, but not by much. Uh, I did report to you the other day that there were 672 critical cases in ICUs across Greece. At the moment, that number has risen to 674, of which uh, 44, for, sorry, 444 are male and 230 are female. Now, the average age of those people in critical condition is 68 years of age. 86.5% of them have underlying health issues or are over the age of 70. And interestingly, we've got some stats in regards to the ICU, or sorry, the COVID clinic, let me reaffirm that the COVID clinic at the moment in Zakynthos has six people being treated in there at the moment. Right now, today's news, as I said, um, is basically very doctor heavy, to be honest. Um, the Greek Ministry of Health is beginning to order private doctors in the Attica region, especially those with a pulmonary background, uh, to join uh, public hospital teams in the region due to the crisis in the hospitals and the shortage of the public health sector doctors. Now, in the meantime, it seems that the Zakynthos Hospital doctors had an extraordinary general meeting and uh, the, the findings of the situation at the hospital in the terms of the doctors, and this is what they're saying, they have gone from a problematic problems uh, to basically a deadlock. Now, this is especially, as they say, after the significant burden uh, due to the pandemic with the operation of an additional clinic for COVID patients and the employment of doctors for COVID vaccinations and tests. Now, specifically, uh, they've reaffirmed that the specialised doctors of the NSS, or that's the National uh, Health Service, basically, for Greece, are served only by half of the prescribed number. And they have the possibility for a minimum number of specialised auxiliary doctors while the situation remains, they are only being served by a quarter of the prescribed amount of doctors that are actually needed. Now, in an announcement that was published in the local press uh, yesterday, uh, the doctors said the few doctors trying ambitiously uh, to meet the need and to cover the daily on-call programmes, which is often beyond the upper time provided by the European law, sometimes with an order or with the fear of disciplinary action at the expense of the possibility of leave, with the difficulty for a break on the next active duty and in general at the expense of adequate rest and any free time. In the last months with these unfavourable conditions, there is an environment of gloom uh, from the pandemic and from the director of Minister uh, Medical Services and the administration. We record a particular disposition for the pressures and the interventions in the on-call program beyond the scientific opinion of the directors of the clinics who are legally responsible for the adequacy and the security of these programs. Now, we understand the role of the above positions and the responsibility and power to intervene where there are gaps in duty or when there are specific malfunctions with proven failures in the handling in incidents. Beyond that, however, we consider that no intervention is justified in the opinion of the director of the clinic on the type and order of duty of the doctors of the department, especially when submitted on the schedule that has been approved by the hospital ES. Moreover, precisely because of the insufficient number of doctors who are required to cover their department for 30 days, even if the legal limits are extended, we consider it perfectly justified, justified for our doctors to have a relevant provision in the rotation of doctors on duty so that they can rest 
as well as basically to meet family obligations even off the island. So basically what they're saying is the doctors are working really hard at the moment. There's not enough doctors. You may remember just a few days ago, uh, the MP for the island uh, was talking about uh, more jobs uh, for the hospital in the term of uh, employment of doctors, uh, they were talking about an extra 14 doctors uh, to go into the local hospital here. And as obviously at the moment, um, doctors are probably not very easy to find at the moment. And so uh, the doctors that are here at the moment are basically under a lot of pressure uh, to do what they have to do. And also the extra demands that's being placed upon them as well is obviously uh, starting to get to them as well. Now, uh, the doctors are also demanding an end uh, to all um, persecution, as they call it, and threats against trade union doctors. Uh, the repeal of the to the, the repeal of the law that burdens hospital doctors with civil liability uh, and in the view of the upcoming tourist season, also possible all possible protection and prevention measures must be relatively uh, observed with molecular tests and vaccines, uh, no medical contradictions, as they call it and a strict means of protection with distances on public transport and airplanes and a mask to be worn everywhere, along with the extension of uh, vaccinations and the repeated tests to all professional groups, with a priority, of course, to go to health professionals and teachers on the island as well. So the other thing as well, the doctors here in the hospital are now looking towards the summer season and the other extra burdens that are gonna come their way as they always do every season, uh, but not a season like we are gonna probably see now where basically um, uh, with the, now the pandemic as it has been running nearly, well, for over the past year, uh, they feel that they're gonna be burdened even more by the arrival of tourists as well, which is gonna put added pressure onto the hospital as well. But first of all, can I just reassure people as well that I do think the hospital here for um, all it has does a fantastic job. Um, it is a credit to the island that we have such a good new hospital. I remember the old hospital when I first arrived here in 2005. And I think healthcare on this island has come a long way uh, in the la in the years that I've been here. And obviously with the announcements from the uh, MP of the island uh, for more equipment that's been gathered and more um, gear, shall we say, and also the want of more doctors as well, uh, the hospital is doing what it can under extraordinary circumstances. So I do take my hat off uh, to the doctors. Um, we might have to wait a little longer, but in general, we actually do get a pretty good service here on the island, all right? And it, it's quite rare that they have to send anybody off the island uh, for further treatment, unless it is a speciality that cannot be uh, coped with here on the island. So please do not be afraid of the hospital. Uh, do not be afraid that you might be burdening them in some way if you go along with something trivial. Uh, trust me, better to be safe than sorry. And don't forget, you have paid for the hospital uh, in your taxes and also in your eco contributions, etc., etc. Uh, and, um, you know, we add to that as well as people on the island. So once again, do not feel afraid not to approach the hospital if you feel you have something wrong. Um, also, I think this brings home the pressure that the hospitals are under. Um, a story came uh, yesterday of a 41-year-old doctor who was being treat who was uh, being treated in Thriar in, in sorry who was working in Thriaros. I'm not exactly sure where that is, but anyway, he killed himself uh, by throwing himself from the roof of the hospital. There, the doctor who was hospitalised on the third floor at the hospital's second pathology clinic. Uh, and did not work at the hospital. I do apologize for that mistake there. He basically killed himself while in hospital. Now, according to the president of the Hospital Workers' Union, uh, Michaela Skigoris, the doctor was experiencing some serious pathological problems. The 41-year-old fell from the third floor balcony into a basement where he was noticed by clinic staff. Now, police at the moment are investigating uh, the cause 
and are, are making their inquiries. So once again, our condolences to the uh, family of the doctor who has um, fallen from a hospital. Um, also as well, the police are busy out and about again, this time not so much uh, enforcing COVID, but more enforcing uh, driving, uh, which is good to see. Uh, just to be aware that uh, over Saturday, there was a uh, island-wide uh, target by the police of the Ionian Islands uh, for the prevention of uh, road accidents and road safety, in particular during checks that were carried out police by police in Corfu, Lefkada, Kefalonia, and also here in Zakynthos. Uh, 437 vehicles and 690 people were checked, and they actually said 690 people were arrested. Hmm, I think that might be a printing error, but that's what it said. Um, two people were done for driving without licenses here on Zakynthos, while a total of there were 56 violations for road traffic codes that were confirmed as well. Anyway, I'm not going to give you the list of what was going on. Um, they did say that checks will continue, uh, aiming at safe use of the road network and compliance with road traffic rules and also the avoidance of uh, road accidents as well. Now, another serious uh, story over the weekend is that the interior ministers of five Mediterranean countries on the front line of mass migration to Europe uh, want their European Union partners to share the burden more e equally. Well, okay, hang on a minute. What's the matter, Nelly? What's the matter, Dolly? Do you want to go out? Excuse me a minute. I'll just let little Nelly out. There you go. There you go, bless her. I've obviously disturbed her sleep. Anyway, let's go back to that story, shall we? Um, basically, yeah, uh, five Mediterranean countries on the front line uh, for migration to Europe uh, want their European partners to share the burden more equitably. Um, according to um, uh, By uh, Byron Camellia, he's Malta's Minister of the Interior, he said, uh, we can no longer be punished for our ge geographical position. Um, he said, uh, summing up that uh, his colleagues from Cyprus, Greece, Italy and Spain, uh, obviously were all in the same condition at the moment and they had a meeting uh, in Athens uh, which concluded on Saturday afternoon. Now the Greek Prime Minister, uh, Mr Takis, and the European Commissioner, uh, Vice President and Commissioner for Promoting the European Way of Life, uh, Maragrita Sramnis, uh, joined the meeting at its start, but left before its conclusion. Now, the five created the Med5 group last year in an effort to form a united front and influence the EU's new migration and asylum pact. Now, their demands are threefold, better cooperation with the so-called countries of origin in Africa, the Middle East and South Asia, more EU members willing to take up refugees and a centralised European repatriation mechanism under the Commission. Now, southern European countries with an extensive coastline have borne the brunt of arriving asylum seekers hoping to enter the EU. Turkey appears to play an active role in pushing migrants uh, towards the EU in contravention of the 2016 agreement uh, with the Union. Uh, Cypriot Interior Minister Nikos Nouris said most of the migrants arriving in his country across from the green line separating Turkish occupied northern part of the island from the Greek Cypriot administered south and called for Turkey to accept inspections by Frontex, the European Border and Coast Guard Agency on its southern uh, shoreline. He added that Cyprus for the past four years has had the most asylum seekers per capita uh, in the EU. Also interestingly, on Thursday, uh, three mayors on the Aegean island of Lesbos, Chichos and Samos uh, called on the European Union to amend the proposal for the new migration pact, saying it unduly burdens frontline countries damages their national interests and creates grey zones in the eastern borders of the EU. Now, the mayors of Miletus, uh, Strathis Celtis, uh, Chinostatamis and also Karamandis and uh, East Samos, George Sterandos, said 
It's widely acknowledged that no single EU country can effectively handle migration and asylum by itself, but it requires a joint and decisive policy based on the principles of solidarity and the fair distribution of responsibilities among the countries with an emphasis on guarding Europe's external borders and averting the migration flow. Uh, they also called on the government in Athens to vote it down as well. Right, so, and finally, <laughs> Greece is split at the moment, and we're not talking about political wise, we're talking about weather wise. And obviously, looking at Amanda's little uh, uh, weather forecast there, it's quite interestingly at the moment, the country is split by the weather. In the north, it is snow, <laughs> and in the south, it's warm temperatures. Although I've got to be honest, I would disagree with that at the moment, and we're pretty south at the moment. Anyway, in the meantime, the southern part of the country sees unseasonably warm weather with sunshine and temperatures above 30 degrees and additionally large quantities of dust from the Sahara Desert in North Africa has been transferred to the Ionian Sea as well as to Crete uh, due to the strong uh, southerly winds. I've got to be honest <laughs> my car and my bike uh, definitely have got a little extra bit of uh, orange on them and uh, that is definitely from the sands of the Sahara that's been blowing over here at the moment so uh, there you go so it, it, it is not nice weather uh, it's it is getting a bit sunny at the moment but in general it's windy and it has been wet it chucked it down yesterday so I'm just going to quickly see what Amanda says for the weather she says good morning Ginger uh, UK weather today she said laugh out loud cloudy and rain with the light breeze throughout the day highs of 15 degrees have a great day thank you for that amanda uh, just quick shout out to julie meldrum who's tuning in as well susie angus is tuning in uh, Teresa and hugger is also choosing in christine wildridge is choosing in john bailey as well morning he says thank you for that buddy uh, amanda obviously tuning in with a fantastic weather forecast as always Galamera Galamera says the lovely Dave Cramp. Nice to see you there. Practicing your Greek as well. Uh, Jeremy Paul Buchanan is also tuning in as well. Nice to see you looking in. Alf Ling is looking in. Jill Ponson is looking in. Uh, Rainer Pete Dillon is also looking in as well. Um, Patsy Ann Dobson says, Good morning, Ginge. Weather not looking too bad there. Cloudy here in Margate. Stay safe. Well, all right, it's whatever we're used to. Trust me, it should be nicer than this today. That is for sure. Anyway, uh, Jill Pogson is also tuning in. She says, Gallimera Ginge. Uh, also, Nick Roberts is watching as well. Marie Bailey is watching too. Um, Barry Leatherdale is tuning in from Essex as well. Uh, give him a wave back, give Mary a wave back as well. C uh, Catherine Ling is also tuning in from the island. Nice to see you looking in as well. Also, Maria Halleberg in Sweden is also tuning in as well. Nice to see you as well. Andre Patrick Varels is also tuning in as well. Nice to see you. Sean Bowen up there on Exmoor. What's it like up there today, fella? I bet it, is it blowing a gale up there? Anyway, nice for him tuning in. And thank you for tuning in yesterday uh, to the Northern Soul Show. Uh, we had a few technical issues with the Northern Soul Show yesterday. Uh, for some reason, it didn't kick off as it should have done at the right time. And then when it did kick off, it played twice, which was rather interesting. Uh, but anyway, hopefully uh, that's all been ironed out by beatsradio.co.uk and uh, that shouldn't happen again. But anyway, it was nice. Thank you to those people who tuned up in the chat area. I took all your requests down for the next uh, Northern Soul show, which I will be recording tomorrow. All right. So if you want to put down any suggestions for that show, by all means, do that and pop them below in the comments. All right, or private message me, whatever you'd like, and I will happily put them in the show for you. Also, as well, today at some point, I will start making my dance anthem show, which will go out on Friday as well. So, uh, again, if you've got any requests for that, I've had quite a lot of requests for the dance anthem show. Just send them to me. I'll have a look, and at some point, I will work them into my set uh, for uh, Friday night. Anyway, quick shout out as well to Rose uh, Wood as well, who's tuning in. Maria Hallberg says, good morning, good morning. And she's writing to me in Swedish and also in English and also in Greek. Oh, you are a clever lady, Marie. There you go. Uh, Shane Bowen says, oh, Gallimera Ginge from a dry but chilly Exmoor. Thank you very much for that. 
Uh, Mick Ling is watching as well. Andy Johnson is watching too. Uh, Jolene de Bruyne. Oh, Jolene de Bruyne. I wonder if that's a Belgium or could that be a Dutch name? I'm wondering. Let us know if you are Dutch, how things are going there in regards to tourism, because we don't hear a lot from Holland at the moment in regards to what's happening with tourism for them coming to Zakynthos for this year. I know there's been a lot of... Um, shall we say, civil disobedience in, uh, in, in Amsterdam and places. Uh, people fed up with the lockdown. And as you saw at the weekend, a lot of nations were taking to the streets over the weekend to complain about the excessive lockdown. And also, interestingly, not many uh, Greeks taking to the streets about excessive lockdown uh, this weekend, but certainly every other democracy around the world certainly were taking to the streets, that is for sure. Anyway, Susan Waldron is watching as well. Nice to see you. Tony Ardley, nice to have you looking in as well, big fella. Uh, Laura Grant says, uh, morning, Ginge. Glorious day in Suffolk today. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> you would get the better weather and we're getting the rubbish weather at the moment. There you go. Uh, Julie Medrum says, good morning. Uh, Andrew the Fridge Watkins is watching as well. I wonder what the weather's like where you are in Wales. Uh, John Mims is watching as well. Linda and Gary are also watching as well. Nice to see you checking in. Uh, Dennis is also tuning in as well. Dennis Kikamolis is looking in. Nice to see you there, fella. Pam Stott as well. Nice to see you. Diane Kemp, Big Al Thompson as well. Nice to have you looking in, buddy. Happy McNaughton. There's a nice name. Happy McNaughton. Nice to see you tuning in as well. Um, Karen Bush as well looking in. Nice to see you becoming a very much of a regular. Anyway, Big Al Thompson says, bright and sunny here on the English coast, on the Eng east coast of England, Jeans. Nice to hear that as well, Al, and nicely uh, said. Right, well, that's it for me for the, today. Thank you to all those people who are tuning in. Uh, the beginning of another week. Um, hopefully the weather's going to... Well, we're supposed to be having this mega weather at the moment, but it's not looking like that at the moment. It is rather windy looking out through the window at the moment. But anyway, I'll keep my ear close to the ground. I'll keep an eye out on what's going on. You take care. You take safe. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you stay safe. Uh, the cats, I've disturbed them now. They're all getting up and going. So anyway, you, I'll, I'll catch you later. Ta-ra.